This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video we're going over manual therapy techniques, specifically instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you are a licensed medical professional with instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization within your scope of practice. Now, there's some gray area here. Not every state has legislation around these tools. If you're not sure, check. I would hate to see somebody getting in trouble because they watched one of our videos and used it on a patient or client when things did not fall within their scope of practice act. Now, these tools, just like all of our other techniques, fall within a model of practice, and we are very big on assess, address, reassess. So even though these tools are specific to perhaps fascial tissue, we're still going to base their use on reliable assessments, we're gonna use these techniques, and then we're gonna reassess, and if they're not effective, we're not gonna use them again for that particular patient or problem. In this video, we're gonna go after instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization for the lateral fascia lata. I'm gonna have my friend Lisa come out. She's gonna help me demonstrate. Now, I know some of you are already thinking about the iliotibial band, and of course, we will address the iliotibial band as part of the lateral fascia lata, or that fascial layer that covers the lateral thigh. Just a little bit of warning, guys. There's no real need to attack the iliotibial band. I've tried, I've tried measuring outcomes, I've tried measuring how much sensitivity over the course of weeks, I've tried measuring the amount of trigger point reduction we get from going after the iliotibial band real hard, and I've just never gotten great results that way, and I think a lot of those individuals who teach these classes for instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization have found a lot of the same thing. Uh, another thing to mention too is, is, remember when we're doing these techniques, we are going after trying to change how individuals move. We wanna improve the quality of movement. So this is gonna be based on assessment. In this particular case, I might do the lateral fascia lata if I saw a reduction in, in hip internal rotation maybe, if I saw a reduction in knee mobility perhaps, or maybe I saw something like knees bow out on an overhead squat assessment. These would all be good reasons that I could then reassess after this technique to see if this was effective for that person and part of the problem. So first thing we need to do is get access to all of the fascia lata, which ends at the iliac crest. So you'll notice I have Lisa in some, some pretty loose shorts here. So a little tip guys, I'm gonna have her go ahead and pull those loose shorts all the way up. Loose shorts are helpful for these techniques because they do need to be done on skin. And obviously if she had pants on, we'd have to pull down the other way, which is not as comfortable. And then a little bit of a modesty thing, guys. Usually what I'll have my clients do is tuck their shorts underneath their underwear and that pins their shorts down so that as we're moving around, like shorts aren't coming loose and there's nothing, nothing showing that shouldn't be showing. First thing we're gonna do is grab a little bit of cream here because again, we wanna, we wanna do this as a fossil technique, not as a technique to just abrade and, and mess with the skin. All right, so I'll rub that in. All right, and again, if you, those of you guys who are manual therapists, this is your first chance to kind of get your hands on the patient and you know, notice if anything feels a little denser. Notice if you feel any trigger points. Notice if you feel any of those hypertonic fascicles. Right, and I notice like she right up in here is, has definitely got some stuff going on. All right, so we'll rub that in. And then we're gonna use our same protocol we've used for our other IASTM techniques. I'm gonna start by scanning. Then anything that feels non-uniform, I'm gonna go over and try to break up any binding that we think might happen. I'll go after trigger points and then we'll do this dynamically to make sure that we get a little bit more functional, functional motion happening. So just scanning here, guys, 20 to 30 degree angle, pull through the skin, right? And I'm 20 to 33 angle, just at the point where I'm getting a little pushback from our muscle. I'm pulling through just like so. Now all of this area, guys, is gonna feel bumpy. I know if you've done ISTM on other areas, it's usually you're only a little bumpy in areas that tend to be a little bit more dysfunctional. The case of the lateral thigh, it all feels a little bumpy and what you're looking for is really bumpy or places where the tool gets stuck. You feel a lot of restriction. You are gonna need to lighten up over the iliotibial band. You could almost think of it the same way you thought of like the Achilles tendon when we did the crural fascia. 
IESTM, you don't want to just dig into that. All right. And then this way. And what I would say, guys, is so far, I think in here, I feel a little bit more dysfunction, a little bit back here, especially as we kind of come up to the, the midpoint here of the kind of posterior part of her vastus lateralis. And of course, as I was coming up here, her TFL is, is definitely a little, a little bumpy. All right, so now we have some areas that maybe we want to address with multi-directional strokes to try to get those layers moving a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this broad tool because we're doing nice big broad areas. Do be careful though, because this tool is heavy. So on this area, because of how sensitive the lateral thigh is, you don't need much more than the weight of the tool as far as pressure. So I'm gonna do some strokes this way. Once again, the, the bevel is about 30 degrees to the skin. I'll do maybe five or six strokes that way. Then we can go this way. Same thing. Two, three, maybe I already see, I already see a little redness, so I'm gonna actually stop at three there because I do wanna get a couple other directions in. So we're gonna so start this way, down. All right, so what I did there, guys, is just to get a little bit more of a diagonal going. I held this like a pivot point and then just kind of circled around. And then I can do the same thing going the other way. And then I can do it this way. And then, wait, I just messed myself up. Okay, this, and then this way, there you go. It's okay, just figure it out. Remember, we're just trying to go in a lot of multiple directions. I think a lot of people get very caught up on what strokes and, and you gotta do a scooping stroke or a spiral stroke. I think the biggest thing to think about is that you just need to do some strokes in a lot of different directions. If the technique I just showed you isn't comfortable for you, then come up with your own set of comfortable directions that you can do. I went into about six directions there. Now we said somewhere back in here, right? So same thing, I'm gonna come up, get a few strokes that way, get a few strokes this way, right. get a few strokes this way. It's funny, she's actually a lot more, there's a lot more tension coming back towards me than going away, so maybe I wanna do a few more strokes towards me and then she's, since she's already getting pretty red, I can lighten up and only do a couple strokes this way. And then up here, this tool doesn't work as well. I mean, I could use the edge here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a smaller tool. So this tool is the, the shark tooth tool. And you can see I'm gonna start with this, this convex surface. Realize you have a concave surface, a convex surface. Again, you're just finding tools that work for the area in this case, the, the concave surface doesn't quite get in there, right? We have that little divot from the iliotibial band and her greater trochanter that we don't wanna just keep bumping into. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the convex surface and kind of get in here. And again, I'm thinking the same thing. I just wanna get strokes in a few different directions. All right, so I'm gonna get some little sweeping strokes in here. Get some different directions going. You can move around. Again, I'm keeping the tool at about 30 degrees and then just pulling through or pushing through in a few different directions to get everything broken up. Now, we went over the, the TFL here as if we were going over the fossil layers over the TFL, but let's say I had a trigger point in the TFL that I had noticed when I was doing my manual techniques. Of course, we could use the end of this shark fin tool here to kind of break up any adhesive tissue we thought had formed around that trigger point. I do find that helps with carryover a bit, helps desensitize those trigger points a little faster. All right, so there we go. And then the last step is we got to go dynamic with this, right? This is. This is tough. This is a, a tender area. We need to be careful. I am gonna use the larger tool here. And the trick to this is we realize that this is gonna get tensed. All right, we're gonna lengthen this tissue if she goes back this way and then lets her foot fall off the table. 
All right, so we're going to go into some extension and then some adduction. And what is helpful for the patient is to have them hold on to the end of the table so they don't feel like they're going to fall off. All right, you're going to hook some tissue in. All right, go ahead and extend for me. All right, now she can go ahead and keep, let her foot fall off the end of the table. All right, so right over those same areas that I was working on that dysfunction, I'm just going to do a few strokes. And when I say a few, guys, again, three to five strokes is probably more than enough. Now we're starting a little bit, a little bit more extension here. So I don't have to follow quite so far. Good. Hold there. Go back into extension. Fall off the table. There you go. Good. If you guys wanted to experiment with some knee flexion or extension, you absolutely could. All right. So if she wants to go that way, go ahead and pull off. Good. Go back, 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 back. Flex your knee for me. Good. Now off. Now down. There you go. All right. You can kind of work with a couple different directions there, trying to help pin the tissue and then pull the muscle fibers, pull the different layers of fascia underneath that pin tissue. Of course, I could do that in a couple areas. Good. Let's get up here. Go ahead and extend and fall off. Good. Good. Try not to rotate your hips this time. All right. So let's try to keep your hips forward again. Perfect. That's good stuff. Maybe for the TFL gluteus men, like the area above the greater trochanter, you could absolutely use a smaller tool. Maybe you're going to use the, sharks, the shark tool and maybe stand this way. And so go ahead and extend a little farther back, 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 and then let your foot fall off. There you go. Good stuff. All right, guys. So there you have it. Again, go over this whole area. But when you treat this area, please, 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 don't just dig into the iliotibial band. You'll give somebody a lot of petechiae, probably a lot of bruising, but probably not a lot of results. And go ahead and ask other individuals who teach like instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization workshops and see 30 and 50 people at a time. I think they'll tell you the same thing. All right, go over this whole area then go through and do your multiple direction strokes over areas that you think are dysfunctional. Attack your trigger points where you knew there were trigger points. And then, guys, work with this pin and stretch stuff with the IASTM. It's definitely one of the more powerful techniques to do with instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. And probably the stuff I see least often is gripping the tissue and then letting movement pull these fossil layers apart. Stay tuned for the close up recap. All right, guys, so now for your close up recap. I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of this Smart Tools cream and get some lubricant on the skin so we don't abrade the skin. Again, I'm just kind of feeling through, picking up as much information as I can. And she's definitely a little, she's got a little bit more density in here and a little closer down to her knee. Of course, I can feel the iliotibial band right here too. And we mentioned previously in this video, we're not going to attack the iliotibial band. I've never found any good outcomes, but I have noticed that it will cause a lot of pain and bruising if you go after that iliotibial band aggressively. We're going to kind of treat the whole lateral fascia a lot of the same. I'm going to start by scanning. So again, 20 to 30 degrees here at the angle. All right, so none of this. We're not just scraping skin. We're going to try to pull some of that fascia with us. Right, as we pull through the skin, I'm trying to note any differences in tissue, te uh, tissue texture, rather. All right. Actually, I felt pretty good. All right, a little bit there. All right, notice I, I lightened up a little bit as I went over the iliotibial band close to the knee, guys. You'll, you'll start to get a feel for it. It's just no. No need. It's not necessary to beat somebody up if you're not going to get an outcome. And we got a little bit in here with some tissue resistance. So I'm not going to use the scanning tool because it's pretty sharp. Uh, I'm going to use a different tool to do my multi-directional uh, breakup of that adhesive tissue. So we'll use the battering here. We're just going to kind of go down this way, down this way. I actually notice there's a little bit more density here and you guys you can see she's getting red pretty quick. So, you know, monitor how many strokes you're using. She's not so bad in this direction. So I'm going to get a couple extra strokes in going this way and then no, nope, not much there. Let's go ahead and 
get a few extra strokes going this way. So, you know, I kind of went in six directions there. Right? I went here, 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 and here. And so that'll help break all that stuff up. Of course, I could go after trigger points next. Let's say I felt a trigger point up in her TFL. Right, right in there. All right, so I can kind of try to break that up as much as I can. And again, we're making an assumption here. We're making an assumption that maybe around trigger points we get a little extra collagen laid down, a little of that disorderly matrix, the binding tissue. And I have noticed that there's like a better carryover for trigger points when I add this. And you can notice how red that got that quick. We note, I noticed a little bit better carryover when I follow up my static manual release techniques with some of this instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. And then of course last, we could do some pin and stretch to add some functional mobility in here. And of course we're just gonna grab some tissue. You guys will feel that once you get the tools in your hand. You're just gonna do the same thing you do, maybe a little less steep on the angle, pull in, drag some tissue up, and then we're just gonna go ahead and have our client extend their leg. All right, so you're gonna go into hip extension and then it's gonna fall off the table and I'm falling off the camera here, guys. But if you go back and watch that close-up recap, you can go ahead and start back to where you were. If you guys go ahead and watch that close-up recap, you'll see how that goes. Hook up some tissue, you can try to extend there, boom. And then a little bit of adduction by falling off the table, boom, there we go. And I'd stick with just three to maybe five strokes in each dysfunctional area for those pin and stretch techniques because they are very aggressive guys. Enjoy the video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments box below. So there you have it. Instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. Make sure to assess, address using the intervention, and then of course reassess. And if you get the chance, these videos are not a replacement for live education. Of course, if you get the chance, you should take live workshops or find a mentor who's experienced using these tools or maybe a friend that wants to learn them too so at least you can practice on each other and give each other some tactile feedback of what you feel, how you felt the next day, what results you felt that you got. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave your questions below.